Hey everybody, how's it going today? I hope everybody is having a wonderful day. Today I want to do a video on uh, part two on how Christians handle rejection. Today I want to do a part two on how do Christians handle rejection. Now in part one, you know, I talked about, you know, about a few months ago about how, you know, some Christians, uh, they go through rejection, whether it's a friendship or whether it's a spouse they wanted. You know, some of them, you know, allowed rejection to uh, cause them to become a bitter person. And I don't want to take away from that video too much. I just want to say this very quick. You know, some people, you know, in today's society, they make it seem like if you, you know, you know, for the guys or for the sisters of Christ, you know, if you want to have a, a happy, joyful life, you need to get married and have kids. That's what they make it sound like. Now, you know, rejection come in many forms, okay? It's not just limited to a relationship. You could have a friendship rejection, or you could have, you know, basically anything, you name it, rejection, okay? But today, I just want to talk about, you know, allowing rejection to build you up, okay? You know what I'm saying? Say like me, for example. I mean, I have been, I have been rejected a few times in my life. See... One thing about being rejected, I thank God for the rejection I experienced in my past because it wouldn't have, wouldn't have made me, you know, as strong as I am today. See so where I come from. See, beside me, for example, um, you know, post of these videos, I mean, if I, if, I, if I reach out to one person, that's all that matters to me. I'm not about these huge numbers. I'm not about these huge subscribers, all this, you know, smash the video, knock button if you like this, or anything like that. I'm about, you know, if I reach out to somebody, that's all well worth it to me. So that's one thing about rejection so much that I have, that, that I've thanked God for because it made me that much more stronger and see, seeking validation of God first above anybody else. I mean, it just made me feel like, you know, I don't have to have validation in others in order to have a happy, successful, blessed life if you catch where I come from. Because that's where I have seen a lot of people over the years go wrong. They placed their, I mean, it's a good thing to have happiness. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Don't, I'm not knocking it one bit. But if you were to place your happiness and joy and peace into the wrong hands, that could lead you into a whole lot of misery, okay? That could leave you in a whole lot of problems that you wish you never met that person. You wish you never you know, seeing that person, even knew that person, you get where I come from, you get a hold of the wrong person. So I, okay, let me just say this, around this time of year, you know, some people could be lonely because they feel like they don't have family or friends to share life with. I mean, it's like the holidays, it's this time of year where people are like rubbing in somebody's face who is single. Oh, hey, look at me. I have a spouse. You don't. Look at me. I have kids. You don't. It's there where I got from. <laughs> that's just uh, how they come off as. We're not saying that's what they're doing, but it, it, it just seems like to some people that could be a depression that they get. You get where I come from because, you know, as I stated earlier, I mean, you know, like I stated earlier and what I stated in part one, you know, uh, how do Christians handle rejection? Um, most people make it seem like, in order for you to have a happy, successful life, you need to be married with kids. And then when that person does not find that, they just feel like they're not worthy to be loved. They're not worthy to be appreciated. They're not worthy enough to have happiness, joy, and contentment in life. You see where I'm coming from. And it causes them to be, you know, a, an angry, bitter person because they feel like, you know, they're not worthy of love. You see what I'm saying? See, most people don't realize love is more than just a romantic thing. Lord, help me say the word, words here. Love is more than just a romantic thing, okay? See, you can love yourself with God, and you can love others, your neighbors, as well as you love yourself, as for Christ loved you, you know, as Christ loved you first. It's our cup from. I mean, you can enjoy your hobbies and things you enjoy. I mean, you see where I come from. I mean, love is not just limited to a man and woman, excuse me, a man and woman relationship, okay? You go where I come from. It's not just limited to that, okay? You can love many, there's millions of ways to love, okay? <laughs> I mean, you can love your dogs, your cats, your animals, whoever you want to love. 
<laughs> but I gotta say, but I mean, it's the things you enjoy in life that you, you know, that's hold dear to you. So I come from. I mean, I mean, most people make it seem like in order to feel love, you got to be in a relationship. You know, you got to be in a relationship in order to feel love. If you're not in a relationship, you don't feel love. Now, let me just say this. I mean, <laughs> love is a part of an emotion, also. So, I mean, if you don't have emotion, if you don't have love or some kind of feeling at all, you're basically just walking dead with no emotions. I mean, basically, are you just basically walking dead with no emotions? You don't have no emotions. You're like that. Who's that uh, guy on that the Halloween day that some people like to talk about so much? That Michael guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just walk around looking like him all the time. It's where I come from. You know, some people that. Like, why did you say Halloween for? I mean, that's making a point. I just making an illustration out of that guy right there. I mean, I say that Michael guy that people talk about, that scary boogeyman type guy. Yeah, that's why you're going to be looking if you don't have love in your heart. Because when you have love in your heart, you have love for other things. You have love for people. And you just have joy and contentment in your heart. It's where I come from. You, you don't have bitterness in your heart. That's what I'm saying. So like I say, See, as a legally blind man, you know, with low vision, I could see things uh, spiritually most of the time that some people with, you know, perfect eyes I can't see. So I come from, you know, though I have, you know, low vision, my eyes are like a camera that's not zoomed in on one particular item. So like I could take this camera, well, actually this uh, Google Pixel phone I had almost 10 years. Tag on, it's been that long almost. Wow. But anyhow, um, <laughs> Google Pixel 3, but... Yeah, time flies, right? But I could uh, basically, um, you know, zoom in on that plant right there. So I was like, see, my eyes are like a video camera that's not zoomed in on one particular item of the room. That's the best way I know how to explain my vision. I mean, I, I have clear vision, but I'm just not zoomed in on something. You know what I'm saying? That's uh, over far off in the distance. You catch where I come from. But like I said, I don't mind talking about my eyes or explaining things. Like I said, that's how you learn by asking. So, yeah. See, that's the thing about rejection. I mean, rejection can make you that st much more stronger. So, I was saying. See, like me, if I if I was afraid of rejection, I would be on YouTube going on two years. And years before, I posted videos on YouTube. Back when I first posted a video on YouTube, I mean, I thought that as soon as somebody puts a video on YouTube, they're going to be like, fire off. And I was like, okay, I better come up with some kind of name for this video because otherwise, the you know, you'll have a viral, no title video floating around the internet. But anyway, it's not like that at all, but like I can say, but I just wasn't feeling it back then. I mean, I just decided now nah, I don't want to be a YouTuber. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what I want to do. But anyway, you know, see, that's the thing about, you know, rejection. You're not so focused on whether or not people accept you or not, okay? So I'm getting that here. See, even if my video reached that one person, it's well worth it to me more than 100,000 subscribers, okay? So I'm getting that here. See, when you when you get your happiness, joy, and peace for God first before anybody else, that's the most wonderful thing because you're allowing God to give you that joy that nobody else on this earth can give. Now, let me just say this as I, you know, end this video here. You know, you know, when you hear it through the, me through the media years, over the years, you know, you hear through the media about how some of the popular celebrities, you know, take their life out. I mean, they're good-looking celebrities. I mean, they're good-looking. Everybody wants to be with them. Everybody wants to be them or people want to be by their side or everybody wants to marry them. But yet, they take their life out. Why is that? So where are you coming from? You have all these people looking up at you, wanting to be you, wanting to be exactly like you, but yet ended your life. Hmm. So where are you getting at here? So I so where are you getting at here? See, so you can have a room full of people and still feel lonely and miserable as a Jay Bird, okay? Just because you have a whole lot of people on your channel, just because you have a whole lot of people following you, 
don't mean you have true happiness and joy. You may have that, um, what is it, that the uh, social media high, not social media high, what the heck is that word? Something like that, um, validation. I mean, if that's the wrong word, it's a leave it in comment, but you just get that validation to relax and share stuff. But, but like I say, when, when, when you search for happiness in all, in all the wrong places, you can find yourself that much more lonelier, if that not more worse. So I come from here. See, that's why I say, see, when you have, when you allow God to be number one, and you build yourself up first, for you think about becoming a spouse, you build yourself up for you think about becoming a friend, you build yourself up for you think about being anything else in this life. That's a blessing. So I come from because. If your self value is based on who's around you, then what's your self value when no one's around? So I come from. If your self value is based on people around you, then what's your self 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 value when nobody's around? So I come from there. See, that's why I say. See, rejection can make you stronger or it can make you weak, meaning that it just destroyed your self-esteem. It just makes you so insecure and you just feel bitterness and uh, envy of other people. So I get that here. But when you achieve rejection to build you up and not cause you to become a better person, that's the most wonderful thing because the number one rejection you should fear in life is God's rejection. You don't want God rejecting you, and you don't want to reject God either. Because if you reject God, I mean, it's pretty much over. So I go, bro. So that's the thing. See, when you allow God to fill you up with the happiness, joy, and peace that nobody else can give you, that's a wonderful thing. See, I'm 38 years old. I've been rejected so much over the years. <laughs> I mean, I'm to the point like, what have I got to lose now? I'm 38. What do I have to lose? If they like me, they like me. If they don't, they don't. What, why should I cry about it? <laughs> it's a joy of life, and let's keep on stepping. <laughs> you see where I get that here? Rejection can make you either a bitter person or or a joyful, peaceful person that's not afraid of rejection. It can make them that much more stronger. Now, let me just say this. Like, you know, you, get, you know, like you apply for credit. You're not going to throw in the towel just because you got, you know, denied a credit because you didn't have a good credit score at the time. You just keep on trying. You keep on trying. You keep working at it. You keep working at it. You keep working at it. Eventually, you'll succeed. You'll never know until you keep trying. So that's what the devil wants people to do. The devil wants people to be like, well, I'm not good enough. I'll just throw in the towel. Forget about it. You see where I come from here. But you'll never know the outcome if you had you have tried. So I come from here, like I say. See, when you're content in life and you're blessed in life, you thank God for the simplest things you have in life. That is a blessing. So like I say, rejection could be your motivator. So I mean, said I mean, uh, let me uh, just close with this for sure. I want to say this right quick. Aside me, you know, um, I used to be close to 300 pounds almost. Now I'm like about 220, and, I, and I'm and i in so much great shape now. But in my 20s, I mean, I was overweight. I mean, I was like, you know, 300 almost. See, had I listened to the devil be like, the devil be like, hey, Kev, what do you think would have happened if uh, you look like you do in your 20s, you know, kind of minus a little bit of gray here? Well, how do you think that's probably would have turned out? It's where I come from. See, had I gave in to that, yeah, I would have been like, dang, I wonder what, what, what the outcome would have been if, you know, I looked like this in my 20s, you know what I'm saying? You know, like, you know, real good fit, you see what I'm saying? But, see, I can't do nothing about yesterday, but I can do something about tomorrow, okay? You see where I come from here? The devil will try to do anything he can to keep it from moving forward. But that's why I say, I mean, that's the thing about rejection. I mean, rejection can make you a stronger person or can make you a better person. I mean, I chose to allow rejection to become my motivator to keep on going and not let it bother me. So that's another thing, too. When you spread the word of God, too, if you're afraid of rejection, how are you going to spread the word of God? Because people reject you all the time. 
You may have some people that rejected you in your own family members. But how strong are you going to be for the Lord? If you're afraid of rejection, I mean, there ain't no way you're going to be able to uh, witness to your family members about the Lord if they reject you. If you're afraid of, you know, rejection, because rejection go a whole lot of ways. Rejection go in many ways and many forms. But the thing of it is, you got to allow rejection to be your motivator to keep trying. You got to allow rejection to be your motivator to make you stronger. Because if you don't, it's just going to leave you an angry, bitter person, okay? So I come from. So it's like me. I mean, had I gave it to rejection, had I gave it to the fear of rejection, I wouldn't be making these videos because I'd be afraid of, oh, somebody ain't going to like me. I'm not going to be good enough. <laughs> See, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be on these uh, on on uh, YouTube making these videos for two years, just so I say it because you know being afraid of rejection, you get where I come from. But as long as I reach out to somebody, as long as my video is a blessing to somebody, that's a blessing to me because I can say because I'm reaching out to somebody, you know who once was where I who is now where I once stood in life. That's where I come from here. So some people may take them a few years to understand things, to get an understanding of things. But then again, some people may, you know, learn stuff in a few months or so. But like I say, this depends on how much a person is willing to learn. It's all I come from here. But like I say, some people learn overnight. But then again, some people learn through the hard knocks of life. So I'll say, but like I say, some of the greatest lessons in life that come from a GED graduation. Okay, and so I'll say. Some some of the, some of the best wise advice givers are some of your elder people too. So I got from there. <laughs> you uh, listen to the older per person that gives you advice of wisdom. They can give you advice of ways you should go and ways you shouldn't go. So I'll say, that's like I say. I mean, rejection is not the end. So I mean, you just keep a you just keep trucking, you just keep trying, you just keep building yourself up, you just keep it moving forward. It's all the same because, like I say, if you allow rejection to determine your life, you'll never move forward in life. I, I guarantee you that. You will never move forward in life. You'll just be stuck in one spot, not going anywhere. So I come from because, like I say, it's a good thing when you allow rejection to become a motivator instead of a tear down and so I'll say it because you know you could you could be rejected in so many ways it's not just a man get rejected from a woman or a woman get rejected from a man or a friend get rejected by a friend but I'll say this though it's better to be alone with God having be a full joy than to be with somebody that's pretending to be your friend so I leave y'all with that if there's anything y'all like to add in the comment section just feel free to leave that in the comment section and I'll see you guys back in my next video now, I hope and pray you guys have a wonderful, blessed day. God bless each and every one of y'all.